Hello and welcome. My name is Alison Watson and it's a pleasure to be moderating this session today and have you join us for part five of the ASEAN Fall Army Women Action Plan and CABI Joint Biocontrol Workshop Series. Today we're going to be focusing on nematodes and uh, fungi and um, it's going to be a very uh, busy session like they all are um, but we have three fantastic speakers, Dr Keith Holmes from CABI, Dr Hongmei Lee from CABI and and Professor Joan Huai Lu from Shang, I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce this right, but maybe uh, Shang King University. They're going to correct me later and tell me how to do it at Julixan Biotech Company. So before we want to start, um, I just also want to make a special thank you to our sponsors, um, DFAT, the ASEAN Secretariat, uh, MAD and CSIRO, and CSIRO is the host organisation of the ASEAN Action Plan, so we're very pleased to have them supporting us. And a huge thanks to the CABI uh, Southeast Asia team who really helped organise this session today. So we really appreciate everyone from CABI chipping in. We've got two really great speakers today with presentations they've prepared, so we're looking forward to hearing from them as well. So just a quick session today. Um, you use the Q&A box to ask questions. And I think that's all set up today. I had a few problems last time, but it's all good, I'm sure. Um, use the chat box to share thoughts. Make sure you introduce yourself because it's a great way to um, find out more around who's doing what and to meet um, people in your own network. Um, and also, if you have any resources or journal articles or um, projects that you've just finished, please don't be shy around posting or pasting in links into the chat box as well. Just also a reminder that this is our fifth session, so it's hard to believe we've done five already. We've only got two left, so the other two will be coming up on, in October and also November, so we're taking about a month's break at the moment. So um, we'll be coming back to you with those sessions. Remember, you can register for all the sessions on our events page and you can watch all the sessions and download the PDF copy of all the presentations from today at the videos page there. So um, don't, uh, don't be afraid that we will come back and you will have a chance to look at all the information that is shared. I'm just going to ask a quick poll today. It's, it's very, um, very easy. It's not going to take long. I just wanted to get a bit of an idea around have you worked with or researched nematodes and fungi for plant health and protection purposes? We just want to see who's in the room, who's going to ask maybe the hard questions, who's going to ask maybe some of the more um, general questions. Let's just see so our speakers know who they're dealing with. Um, don't be afraid to ask difficult questions because all our speakers are experts and are really looking forward to uh, hearing your questions that you've had on the subject for a while and we've got oh 68 percent already so let's see if we can get a little bit higher so if you haven't answered the quiz yet it may be difficult if you're on a phone I think it doesn't always work and I'm getting up to 80 percent which is great it's my target maybe a couple more people Yep, and then I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share the results and you should see that 68% have said yes, uh, which is really actually quite exciting because um, there'll be lots of uh, really good questions here, I think, for our expert speakers and 32%, which shows really strong interest actually uh, in this topic. So we're hoping that you could be interested in, in getting into this field or exploring this as um, part of an integrated pest management uh, program in the future. So welcome everyone and thanks for being here today. Right, moving on, here's our three wonderful speakers. Um, we are going to be moving quite fast through each session. We're going to start off with Dr. Keith Holmes, uh, and then we'll be moving through uh, the other speakers, and you will have uh, 10 minutes of questions after each presentation. So please, if you've got those questions, don't forget to put them in the um, Q&A box. And we talked about that before, so we're now going to move on to our first uh, speaker today. And I'm going to ask Keith if he can uh, share his presentation. 
Uh, and um, if you would like to start, Keith, and thanks very much for joining us. Keith, Keith just told me he's been traveling um, all on the plane for quite a while, so he may have a bit of jet lag, but I'm sure that's not going to uh, impact on his presentation. So I'll just stop sharing, um, Keith, and that might help you yeah, load up. Yeah, I was up. wondering what's... There we go. I've stopped sharing. I think you're good to go. Okay. Okay, so can you see that? That's I can, it's perfect. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon or good morning, depending where you are. Uh, I'm Keith Holmes. I'm working for CABI for quite a number of years. I'm a plant pathologist by training. Over the past few years, I've been involved in various aspects of biocontrol, in particular developing mass production of biocontrol agents and really looking at doing this on more of a, a factory scale rather than laboratory scale uh, approach. I'll just stop sharing the video because it's a bit distracting. Okay, so this um, presentation is about the general approach to how we did a production technology transfer for entomopathogenic nematodes with a particular focus here on the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, uh, or maybe more colloquially North Korea. And Hong Mei, who will be speaking later, was also involved with this, this activity. So this wasn't obviously, or isn't um, focused on full army worm. Our way into this activity was through the problem of these soil dwelling insects, the cut worms, the wire worms, and the white grubs. And with the focus here, which is on North Korea, they were losing uh, up to 30% of their crops uh, particularly the maize uh, vegetable crops due to these these types of pests in the soil and in some areas uh, Miru Hills for example they were no longer able to actually produce crops because the density of the soil grubs was so high you, you couldn't produce anything so it was a real a real problem and the reasons for this are many I mean one of the issues is of course the cryptic lifestyle of these pests they're in the soil they're hard to target we have a problem with effective distribution of active ingredients. Uh, insecticide resistance is becoming a huge problem globally, not just within, within Korea. And there was a, an issue with local availability of suitable chemicals. Again, that's becoming a, a global issue, not just a, a local one for North Korea. And then changes in global environments and the climate change is changing the profiles of pests, they're moving into different areas becoming an increasing problem as we move forward. So this was really where we were coming from for the fall army worm. I think uh, Hong Mei will present information on, on this and how it works later. But it, these uh, nematodes can obviously be used to target that pest as well. So given that we were looking at North Korea, we, we had a project with the, the EU to look at how we could improve pest management practices against these pests. Obviously, this has to be part of an overall IPM strategy. We can't just go in with, with one tool. We need to have this embedded within a, a framework and an effective approach. But the key aim for us as part of this project was to look at how we could develop a low cost, low cost, locally adapted, sustainable biocontrol production system. And we're looking to use the nematodes and to adapt technology from China and Switzerland. Uh, part of this process then requires increasing the capacity of the local researchers and technical staff in developing and implementing the, this technology, uh, and also in the future developing the IPM and rolling it out to the farmers. So it was quite a complex task we had to look at to um, produce the nematodes in Korea. We were starting from zero. Now, why are the nematodes of interest? Well, I think very many people here today are aware of how effective they can be and how for the soil environment, they're particularly of interest because they are adapted to living in the soil and infecting insects in that environment. So this could be in the field or it can be in cover crop systems in glass house, potting mixtures, etc. But the way they operate, as you can see here, 
is that they, the infective nematode, the juvenile, will enter the insect in the soil. It has associated symbiotic bacteria, which it releases inside the insect host. These are important because these are what will kill the insect. These proliferate, kill the insect. They start to liquefy the uh, internal contents. This material is then used as a nutrient source by the bacteria and, and then the nematodes as well. So we get proliferation of the bacteria and the nematodes within the insect carcass. And then these emerge and we have this secondary cycling taking place. So we have this benefit that we apply a nematode to an environment and then it produces much more material itself. So we then have, uh, in some cases, we can go from one to 10,000 juveniles being released from a insect cadaver. So it's a very useful technology. What's important here are these bacteria. Without the bacteria, there's no impact with the nematodes. And that's part of the quality control issue that we need to make sure we have the right bacteria associated with the nematodes and that it's the right form as well. So for the, we have two main groups we are working with, the styanemitids and the heterorhabditids. So the styanema tend to have the xenorhabdus bacteria associated and the heterorhabditids would tend to have the photorhabdus associated. Um, these can be quite useful things to know because if you have an infected insect, if it's red in colour, then it's probably, it will be the heterorhabditis photorhabditis bacteria, which has killed the insect. So as we mentioned, these nematodes are useful in the soil because they are moving and living within the soil. The Steinonema carpocapsi, for example, adopts an ambush strategy. So it will remain at or near the soil surface and will infect uh, the insects. The heterorhabditis bacteriophora, this is more active, has a seek and destroy or cruiser strategy, and it will seek out more sedentary insect target hosts. So, so these are really useful tools and very interesting from biologi biological perspective. So our task was to look at how we could transfer this technology into uh, North Korea. So they had no previous experience of this technology. So we had to develop uh, capacity in sourcing and screening the nematodes, capacity in the use of the production technology itself. And also we had to look at how we could install and adapt the technology that we were using from China, Switzerland, and at the same time, develop infrastructures for the production. So it's quite a, a complex parallel number of activities. Our key partners were the Ministry of Agriculture and various institutions, including the Department of Plant Protection, Central Plant Protection Station, and then the Provincial and County Plant Protection Stations and the County Farm Management Boards. And the, one of the key partners, the Academy of Agricultural Sciences. So all these partners are essential for us to develop the technology in the first instance at the high level in Pyongyang, in the capital, but then to disseminate out through the counties, the provinces, and eventually down to the farm level. So to begin this process, we got a, our key cohort of trainers, scientists from the Academy of Agricultural Sciences, and also from the Pyongyang Agricultural University and the Central Plant Protection Station in Pyongyang. And we did study tours to Switzerland, so working at Andermatt Biocontrol, and also to China, working with the, the Guangdong Entomological Institute in Guangzhou. So these are really important partners, and we took our key participants and trained them in all aspects of the nematode mass production. So they had quite a long period of time doing hands-on training. So they were really familiar themselves and what was involved in using this, this information. So whilst we're starting the capacity building, we also have to then develop somewhere where we can actually establish our production systems 
and do the experimental work and development and adapt the technology for the Korean situation. So we established a experimental facility at the uh, Academy of Agricultural Sciences in Pyongyang. And once we had this, this building prepared, we then installed all the equipment required for the various types of production. And then within this facility, we would do the development, the adaptation, and eventually some of the, the training of trainers as we went forward. So as I said, this is all, all these things are happening in parallel. And one of the things that was also happening was the development of the capability to identify their own local indigenous nematodes, which would then be incorporated into the production system and disseminated to the farms in the future. So we had to train the local staff in doing the field surveys, the screening, maintenance, etc. And this is where we start with the uh, technology transfer in, in detail. We start developing manuals for all these activities, and these are produced in Korean and, and in English, and eventually they are adapted into a, a full manual. So once we had our experimental facility developed and we had our equipment installed in the facility in Pyongyang, then we started to adapt and produce a prototype production system for, for North Korea. And this eventually through hands-on training with our experts from China, from CABI and from Switzerland, the um, team at the academy were then well-versed in the production and the use of these nematodes. So we eventually have a prototype system, which is the, based on the, the in vivo production system, again, detailed manual prepared in Korean and English. So that can be used for training of other participants in the future. Key to this is obviously the alternative host. So for the in vivo system, we are producing the nematodes on a live host. And for those of you who aren't familiar, these are our, our live hosts. These are Tenebrio Mogitor, which we're using. And these are what we use for the in vivo system. We infect these with the nematodes. In this case, we have um, heterorhabditis. So you can see we have the Tenebrio have turned red. And, and this is um, a basic approach called the white trap. So we have the, the, um, the Tenebrio larvae are on a platform surrounded by a reservoir of water. The nematodes um, will eventually then move from the surface out of the larvae into the reservoir, and then we can collect them and we can drain them off and collect these nematodes and use them directly. Okay. The second system is rather more complicated. So the first system, we would look to use uh, even down to the farm level. This is, this is feasible. The second approach is a slightly more advanced it's in vitro system, not as advanced and complicated as using a fermenter vessel approach, but still requires a certain level of um, scientific knowledge and skills. The key part of this is the reintroduction of the bacteria. With the in vitro system, we lose the associated symbiotic bacteria. So we have to coach them separately and reintroduce them. So this is a, a key step. And then once we uh, inoculate the media with the bacteria, they grow. We then have a, a culture of bacteria on sponge. We then add in the nematodes. And the nematodes grow on the sponge. They grow on the, the bacteria, the artificial diet, which is incorporated and been adapted to the local context. Um, as we mentioned, this is a factory scale production. So we have lots of flasks with lots of sponge, with lots of bacteria and nematodes in, and there will be huge quantities of, of this material being produced. So the, the scale depends on the facility. We would maybe look to have 100 flasks per cycle or more. Once the nematodes have 
fed on the bacteria, artificial diet reproduced, then they start to emerge from the sponge and they form this webbing on the surface. This webbing is basically the, the nematodes. And when we see this, excuse me, that's a career. So when we see this on the surface, then we know we have the nematodes and it's ready to be harvested. And after this, they will be harvested, packaged, and then taken to the farm level. So we now have our system in place at the prototype stage in Pyongyang. We then look to disseminate down to the farm level via the county plant protection stations or the provincial plant protection stations. So to do this, we developed county competence centers at three plant protection stations. And these have training facilities as well as the production facilities. And they can then train the other um, provincial or county production facilities as we go forward. We also developed a number of cooperative farms to look at the feasibility using the in vivo system. So eventually we have quite a large network of these facilities which we've renovated, constructed and equipped with equipment. And this is where we then look at the training of trainers approach. So the key staff that we've already trained from the academy, the university and central plant protection station, they then within the experimental facility in Pyongyang, they have classroom and laboratory sessions to train the staff from the county and provincial plant protection stations, particularly those who will be involved in the county competence centers. And they will be the ones who will be in further dissemination of the training in the future. So that's the next step. So we've had the, the training of the training of the training of trainers in Pyongyang. And then at the county level, we start to do the training of all the other county and provincial facilities. Again, the classroom and laboratory based approach. So eventually we have functioning production units. However, we need to make sure that they are producing the correct material of the right quality. So that then is continuous in facility support from the national experts in North Korea, also some support from international experts from China, Cabi and from um, Switzerland. So then eventually we have really good production systems taking place. We're on a large scale, factory scale production, and this material is then available to go to the farmers. But then obviously we have to train the extension workers at the farm, farm gate level. So then there was the TOT to train provincial county plant protection experts and county farm board representatives. And these are the people who would then be going to work with the farmers. So eventually we get down to the, the farmer level training, which is also linked to um, regional training of the extension service. So for all these activities, we need to have um, various didactic materials. We produce lots of training materials and handouts in, in Korean and English. Uh, also a number of, the, number of videos which are providing information on the general problem and general approaches to the management of the nematodes, also specifically on the production in vivo and in vitro production systems. And in particular, we developed a training manual to be used in the facilities, which gives them all the details they need in, in text form and diagrammatic form on the production of in vivo or in vitro uh, of nematodes. So it's detailed manual, lots of information, and um, very well received by the technical staff. We also produced, it, produced some posters, which uh, are for general display in the laboratory and uh, conversation pieces for when you have visitors. So in the end, we've developed a new system, a new tool for the Koreans. They've identified their own local nematodes as well. Some of these are really quite um, effective. And in some of the field studies we did, they were effective against wire worms, which is quite a difficult target often. And for not just for maize, which we were focusing on, but for other crop systems, 
they were being used and for the cabbages the use of the nematodes was producing five tons extra per hectare so quite a useful tool for the Koreans and uh, lots of interest in going forward. So in the end we produced a new tool it's uh, compensating for the lack of effective chemicals and we now hopefully have some happy farmers at the end of the activity. So that was rather a whistle-stop tour of developing nematodes for the farmers in North Korea. So thank you for your time and I'm within my 20 minutes I think. Thanks, Keith, and, and well done. And, and that's an extremely interesting example because it's it's really nice to see how you've gone through that sort of tech transfer elements and really tried to develop something for farmers and, and gone through all the different networks. You've got lots of um, uh, appreciation there coming up, I can see. Um, Keith, I have uh, some questions for you. Um, I guess firstly with the manuals, I mean, you said that they were in uh, Korean, but also in uh, English. So anyone can download and <clears throat> access those materials. Is that right? Okay, so at the moment, the, the manual we have, the formalized manual is just in Korean. Okay. Uh, we, have, we have an English one, which we um, were hoping to publish at some point in time but we haven't finalized that yet so that's okay. something which isn't readily available in English at the moment okay. but there are lots of materials available on, online um, from other sources we can discuss internally whether we can make those manuals available or not um, I think that's maybe for discussion because it's not just our yeah copyright it's also um, our partners as well so we have yep. to have an agreement but yeah no I'm sure there'll be some interest from today's listeners around whether they could uh, get a copy of those and whether do you think so they could be adapted do you think other country people from other countries could pick those up and use them very much like they are if they were in English yeah it's it's really the the adaptation part of it is really looking at what low-cost uh, nutrient sources you can use Okay. Obviously, in in um, Switzerland, they were using um, pork, kidneys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, using uh, high quality meat products okay. for the proteins. Whereas yep. in the China production system, they were using uh, powdered eggs, for example. But you can also use um, soy soy flour, okay, soy, soy meal. Because so there was one, a, there's one question here: to what extent this technique could be developed or applied worldwide? For example, in Africa. Well, I think Hong May will look at that. So we, we developed a project quite a few years ago following on from this. So using our experience in North Korea in developing this, this method, we then developed a pilot facility in Rwanda, which uh, Hong May will comment on because obviously it's that's uh, part of her presentation. So there, there is potential for adaptation to all regions and locations. A key thing, obviously, is uh, adaptation to local nutrient sources and using an indigenous uh, nematode is pref okay. preferable because these are usually better adapted to local conditions. Yep. And we see a great, for most of these biocontrol agents, if we find an indigenous isolate, it's much more effective than even the, the commercial ones, to be honest. And that's okay. what we found with the nematodes. So it can be adapted to different regions. What you need to look at is the uh, business plan, the management plan. How okay. cost effective? You have to make it cost effective. So we have to have a business plan in place. Okay. We look at the the cost of production compared to the. So that, farm that was price. actually my next question. <laughs> you're you're already there. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess it's. I mean, this is quite an extensive uh, network that you're forming, and you're going at different le multiple levels um, through the sort of system. Um, so. What is the cost of running such an initiative? I mean, I mean, you don't have to give me the exact cost, of course, but is this an expensive exercise? Is it um, not expensive? I mean, when you do that business case, is it is it is it cost effective for North Korea, for example? In the end, was it? Is it yeah, yeah, I mean, not, yeah, North Korea is an, an um, exceptional case because obviously. Uh, it's a different environment. It's a, a very good environment because you get things done quite effectively. Um, getting feedback on some of these aspects as regards the business side of things is, is rather problematic. 
So we we have um, it is the initial investment obviously is coming from the the donor. Yeah. So the donor is paying for the equipment, which is yep. really the, the the most expensive part, particularly for the in vitro system, because we need autoclaves, uh, laminar flow cabinet, and the yep. glassware. So that it's 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 probably around um, twenty thousand euros yep. to set up the facility with all the equipment. But once um, that's set up, I mean, in some of these countries where you can get you have some of that already, do you think it's it is cost effective? Yeah. Uh, as I say, it's difficult to get the figures. The Koreans tend to use a, a bartering system. So, But the only positive thing we can say is that after the first two years of use, the farmers with them, themselves coming and asking for the nematodes, which is usually a good sign. It means that it, it's working, there's an interest. And um, it's so that the facilities are still operating. This is a few years ago now. Yep. So the facilities are still operating. They're using the materials in horticultural crops, whereas initially it was developed for maize, which is not yep. as cost effective, but much more cost effective to use in high value horticulture. Yep. Uh, and that's that's the way they seem to have diversified. They seem to have diversified into horticulture. So the vegetables and the fruit crops now to okay. use the nematodes. So it, it is effective. It is cost effective. But obviously you have to look at that on a case by case basis. Yeah. And what was the, um, what do you think were maybe the biggest, the two biggest challenges that you face with setting up such a system? Uh, there were peculiar issues. Obviously, we have um, certain equipment we have to be very careful on how we can introduce into the country because it has this dual use aspect. So um, due to the UN sanctions, we have to be very careful that we go through the correct authorities to bring in equipment. But I think the the main challenge was was really more to do with the way that people think. So trying to go from a linear approach to production to trying to have a multi layered factory style production system yeah. that was quite a challenge. So people are quite happy to start from point A and go to point B, and then start again. The challenge we had was trying to make them think about starting at point A. <laughs> And then a week later, starting at point A, A1, a week yeah. later, starting at point A3, so that you have this continuous production of, of material. So I think that but is that, that true? Is that true? Challenge. And I mean, you've worked in lots of other countries. And, and is, is that what you find thinking about your work in those other countries? Is, do, you, do you find that always a challenge? I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's um, definitely an issue in, in many cultures. This, this check for the, I think it's, um, yeah, it definitely is is something that's uh, a challenge. Maybe Hong Wei can comment on how it okay. worked in Rwanda. But well, that's probably is, a good it, good segue maybe to Hong Hong Mei's um, presentation. She's going to come up next, and maybe she can keep that in mind that question. Um, but Keith, it's it's really fascinating. It's really nice to see uh, a presentation that really looks at um, that tech transfer. How do you set it up? Um, and really interested, in, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of interest in seeing the English versions um, or those who speak and read Korean, I'm sure they'll be interested as well um, if they haven't already seen it. Uh, for the rest of us like me uh, who don't speak Korean, I'll be looking forward to the uh, English version and hopefully that will come out because I'm sure there'll be a lot of interest in that and sharing those materials. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, and really appreciate you sharing your expertise and your the, the input and insight with us. Thank you for the invite and hopefully people were able to follow my rapid delivery there. No, no, so. very well done, very clear. So thanks, Keith. If you can hold on, I'm sure there'll be some more questions coming through. Um, I'm going to ask Hong Mei if you could um, share your screen and, and it's a really good introduction. I think Keith's done, Keith's doing my job for me. So that's brilliant when, when you have a presenter like that because it's a, a perfect introduction for you. So you're really going to dive into a case study here. And we, I think we heard a bit about this case study a little bit in a previous session a couple of years ago, just at the start uh, with Ted Turling and his um, team. And I know he's been involved in this. So, so we're looking forward to seeing what you found out and perhaps showing us exactly how it kind of works in practice uh, and what the results were. So welcome, Hong Mei. Yeah. Uh... Thanks a lot, Alison. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon and good morning. 
my name is Humay. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to be here uh, to share some of these uh, activities uh, carried by Kaibi. Um, in the beginning, I would like to uh, a little bit of a surprising because today, once in the beginning, Alison make it, uh, making the vote. Uh, we have nearly a 70% uh, participants have the experience with today's topic. So it's a very a good uh, direction. Uh, so today I'm sharing the topic is uh, uh, integrated with this technology transfer, as well as for the uh, research part. So uh, I hope so my presentation and case presentation, my colleague will can give you a comprehensive uh, uh, about the EPM work uh, done by Kaby. Uh, as we know, for the uh, ASU report uh, control, there will be different uh, options. Uh, for example, for the uh, microbial, uh, as we know for the natural enemies, predators, or the uh, parasitoids, um, uh, also include for the, our entomopathogenetic nematodes. The short name is EPM. Uh, besides that, uh, there also have the pollution uh, solutions, uh, micro or bells, uh, like the uh, fungi, bacteria, and virus. Later on, we have the presentation about the uh, metabolism is uh, uh, insectidal or fungi. Uh, by precise, I would say nowadays, uh, we will be gradually uh, accepted uh, by the uh, government policy makers, as well as for the different stakeholders. Uh, as uh, just now, a uh, case mentioned for the challenge. I think uh, the people need time uh, to digest, to transform uh, from the chemicals uh, to the biopesticides. Uh, in regard to the uh, biopesticides uh, types, there have been different uh, these, uh, categories. Uh, for example, uh, the natural enemies, pheromone traps, and uh, also microbials and the plants extracts. Here I would like to uh, highlight for these different um, experts may have different uh, 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 different opinions on the nematodes. Some people will group it in the microbials, but some people would like to combine with uh, natural enemies as uh, um, microbials. Okay, anyway, uh, so today, uh, uh, nematode is our uh, is our topic. So the nematode is very tiny. Uh, so we can't uh, see it by our eyes. Uh, according to the uh, report, uh, the EPN is the third uh, most traded group of biological control products just followed by the BT and the trichogramma. So this is a, a worldwide uh, information. So the uh, EPM may kill the pest and the ground, as well as for the ground pests. Uh, so this is a motion, how the EPM works. Uh, Case just explain this. Uh, in his presentation, so I will not repeat it. As we see for the uh, target pest, the EPM uh, may it is with like the grubs. So this is underground, but also they can uh, against uh, the, um, the bark or leaf worms uh, insect pest. For example, the uh, beetles, in the back. The EPM, once we use it, we need to think about. So the insects have different development stages, uh, larvae, 
a pupa adult or X. So which uh, development stages we should uh, use the e parental control. Uh, so based on the experience, so we suggest uh, to use the e and uh, to control the larvae stage. Yeah. So the below uh, picture is showing us, so in this uh, cadaver can have 10,000 uh, EPN inside. So this is why nowadays the EPN is much more popular because it is quite productive. So in the theory and the practice, uh, the EPN is a good solution. But how about the field application? Do we have some of these technologies to use it in the field? Yes. So good experience with these fluid applications of nematode in soil. So this is a tractor. Uh, so uh, in, in, in European countries, so they develop this, uh, this motion um, to uh, use uh, EPN uh, combined with uh, sewing activity, all this uh, plowing activity. So it's successful. Now we can, uh, I would like to share uh, some case studies we done in Rwanda. Uh, so against the crop pests. So first uh, case study is in Rwanda. So this is uh, 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 to control the underground pest. Rwanda is a developing um, agricultural country. So the agriculture is very important in Rwanda's GDP, can account one third. Uh, today, uh, the agriculture population is estimated to 80% uh, in the country. Uh, in 2011, Rwanda farmers experienced significantly uh, yield losses of cassava, potatoes, and beans. So this uh, was got the heavily damage about the wet grass. So uh, the underground pest is not like uh, the above ground pest. We can see the damage symposium. Obviously, once we found the damage caused by the underground pest, it's already late. So this uh, will reduce uh, the yield, but also uh, can shorten the agri agricultural product shelf time. Uh, in our study, uh, we did the survey with the farmers and uh, market for these agro dealers. Uh, to get the information once the local people have the uh, crop, crop uh, problems, uh, how they will do visit. We found uh, over 70% of uh, farmers uh, will do nothing. Uh, once they have the solutions, once they want to do something um, to save uh, the, the yield, so they will choose the pesticides. So based on this uh, uh, current situation, we first did the uh, survey in Rwanda, we will find uh, where is the problem? What kind of these different uh, underground pest so they have? So this will provide us the information in the future once we want to uh, do the treatment where we should go. So this first is for the uh, problem, where is it? Uh, the secondly, so we did the survey in Rwanda in different uh, provinces. So we try to find the uh, local solutions. Uh, so we did the uh, tribe, we uh, collect a lot of these different uh, soils and then track the local uh, EPNs. As we know, the EPN 
uh, is not designed like the uh, molecular uh, DNA things. So they are existing in the natural language. So we are very lucky. We found uh, seven uh, different uh, uh, EPN strains in Rwanda. And then we did the uh, laboratory indoors uh, test uh, to find which one will be good. Uh, and then uh, later on, we can move further to do the uh, field trials test because we can't do everything. Yeah, we need to find the uh, good ones. Uh, based on the uh, laboratory test, we move to the uh, field. So, uh, so this is uh, we doing um, the field trials in the Irish potato or field. So, uh, we test a different uh, this uh, dosage with a uh, 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 nematode, uh, and later on we uh, observed. Uh, you know, from the in the beginning, uh, the planting until the harvest. So you see, is in the eighty days. We still, uh, in total, uh, we run uh, about uh, three and a half months, and then we find the good ones. Uh, later, uh, we will expand uh, this work in different uh, uh, crops locally. Like the Irish potato, uh, beans, uh, cabbage, also in different uh, uh, provinces. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this work is, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, so we are doing for the uh, integrated project uh, with the research as well as for the uh, technology transfer. Uh, the middle picture is we are, uh, is a project uh, doing for the field demonstration. Uh, so the nematode is uh, produced in the uh, in the facility based on in Rubana, uh, Rwanda. Uh, so we can see different uh, rooms for different function. So here I will not uh, uh, talk about uh, so much for these details as uh, my colleague Case gave a very good comprehensive uh, presentation to show uh, the different uh, production in vivo and in vitro uh, measures how to produce. Uh, but here I want to mention in Rwanda, uh, so we used uh, uh, the Chinese technology uh, in Rwanda, so we use uh, in vitro ways to do the mass production. Yeah, uh, as we know, so this is the first uh, ever uh, uh, biocontrol production facility uh, in Rwanda. Um, perhaps uh, also the first in East Africa. Yeah, somebody may uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and then for the soil pest control uh, techniques uh, were disseminated with, uh, uh, through the sticker uh, workshops, uh, photo shades, uh, and uh, on site this demo, we, we also make a video uh, with local language uh, to uh, broadcasting uh, in the radio and the TV channels. So the pictures is showing us the activities. So we are very happy uh, once we are doing on the uh, field uh, demonstration and the case, uh, the small case are very keen. So they are wondering oh, what is this? So I think maybe this is the future uh, for the agricultural production for the young generations. So they are very open-minded to accept this. Uh, new philosophies. Um, the second uh, 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 case study is about the fall armyworm. So I pick up this one is uh, today's uh, for our this uh, topic is related to the uh, fall armyworm. 
uh, as we know, a lot of this basic information about the formula. Uh, so here, I just want to uh, pick one example from in Indonesia. I see some participants from Indonesia. So IPN was a pioneer uh, in drugs in Indonesia. But when a new past is come in, so what kind of these solutions we need to provide? So uh, in different locations in the worldwide, so they may uh, use the local uh, local capabilities to do their own decision. So everything is is good decision because uh, uh, everywhere is different. So here's the example is we see, so they can use uh, chemicals uh, in Ghana and Zambia. So it's uh, very effective, but as well, so they, we can see there a lot to have uh, this uh, environmental friendly solutions like the ash hand picking, uh, also with these formal traps. So we did the work in, um, so this work is also in, uh, in Rwanda, use the same facility for the EPN. And previously we produce the nematode for the underground pest. So once we do the work in Rwanda, uh, use EPN, to against the uh, for armyworm, uh, we did a very similar work. So first, uh, we do not need to find the for armyworm because it is uh, above ground pest. But we did the uh, work uh, with the uh, different uh, EPN strains, how they can uh, effective to against the uh, for armyworm. So here, uh, so for this work, we mainly focus on what kind of this field treatment applications, these methods to uh, against the for animal. We can see here we use the different uh, ways. Yeah. Um, but later we found uh, the, uh, the EPM uh, mixture with the gels is a good solution to do the field work. So this uh, picture is showing us uh, it, uh, with uh, water uh, spray or with this juice. Uh, one time treat, uh, treatment with this resorbent uh, with this IG appearance uh, uh, for uh, each plant. Uh, as in the beginning, we still can remember. So for one, uh, cadavers of the uh, uh, insect, so they can uh, produce 10,000. So, yeah, uh, so which means uh, can cover three uh, plants. Assessment of five and 10 days uh, post treatment. So, this is you see is in uh, February. Uh, so, we do the work. Uh, we repeat the field work also as well as this year. Uh, the results is very positive. So uh, up to four treatments uh, with this 3,000 uh, EPNs per plant. So later on, so, uh, the work in the end, so they can uh, comparison with uh, chemical sprays. Yeah, we can see the farmer is very happy. Two minutes, Hong Mei. Yeah. Okay, so looking forward, uh, so we would see, so this is uh, new things. So we need to, uh, like the growers, need to understand the requirements of the back into agents. Uh, and the training is very important because this is a new technology, new uh, information. Uh, so we need to do for the researchers, uh, but as well as for the farmers for the uh, grassroots uh, technici technicians. Uh, especially for the EPM, uh, so it's different with the parasitoids or the predators. The transportation is really needs a cool, cooling condition. So the, uh, once we, before we um, spread, so we need to check how the quality. Different uh, uh, pests will request a different uh, uh, dosage. Um, I would say so. 
once we use uh, uh, nematode uh, in the field, so they also have something uh, can influence uh, the, the application. So like the tillage, yeah, uh, or as well as for the insecticides. Yeah, so this is a slide we, we can see uh, for the field application EPM in the worldwide people is focusing on the technology. Yeah, uh, so this is the last slide I showed you, uh, earlier. So we want to uh, uh, highlight enhanced study tour is very important. Once we do the work in the country, like in African countries, uh, so we understand the local situation, but the local people need to understand uh, what kind of this technology uh, to produce or to do the work in the worldwide. So study tour out of the country is also important. Um, yeah, so this is the, the, my last slide. So as I mentioned, so the nematodes can kill the insects, in, in, insects but as well as for the other things like the slugs, snails. Yeah, so this is a biological control. We can't see the effective within the short time. Uh, so generally, so they will carry it between uh, four days to three weeks. Yeah, thanks a lot. Hong Mei, thank you so much. Great presentation. Um, so much interesting information. And I'm sure there'd be lots of people that would like to do a study tour as well to China <laughs> to see in action the uh, the uh, facilities and, and how to do that. I'm sure if people would put a thumbs up if they would like, look, there'd probably be lots of people that would like to do that. So keep that in mind, maybe for a future workshop. Um, I've got a couple of questions for you just quickly because we're running a little bit out of time, but I'm just going to read out very quickly. Um, here's a question here, Hong Mei. Please, is it possible to produce uh, EPNs in Rwanda and export them to the neighboring countries for the control of fall armyworm? Yeah, I would say it's uh, uh, quite uh, uh, feasible and possible uh, just uh, as an uh, EPM. So, so they need to uh, uh, prepare, produce it in advance. So this is, uh, but for the moment, I would say in Rwanda, in the facility, so they are not stocked in advance. But later on, if someone in, in African countries, so they really want it, so we would happy to bring for this relationship connect. Excellent, great, thank you. What is the persistence in the environment? Do we need to treat each season or at a certain stage that the EPM will establish and control the target pest? Uh, so this is a very good question. As uh, I would say, uh, the EPM is uh, existing uh, in, the, in the natural habitat. Once we do the, uh, do the treatment uh, as an example for the uh, for the for army worm uh, once we treat it for the uh, four times so the results can comparing with the insecticides uh, later on once they kill the uh, the target pest so where they will go definitely so they will go to the uh, natural habitat again so if we see the long term so they can um, control the target pest in the uh, acceptable level. Yep, okay. Um, here's a question from Ubeck. Hi Ubeck, nice to see you here. Um, it is a question around how about the impacts of the moisture in the soil and also the desiccation effects due to UV? Uh, yes, for the moisture it's with a high influence for the EPN's uh, application in the field. So the request for this is not dry, definitely, because it can't survive. But if they are uh, fully is covered by the water, it's also not good. <clears throat> okay, so a balance, excellent. Um, Keith, have you got something to say? I see your hand up. Yeah, just want to add comment. Yeah, just on the, the persistence comment. Yep, go for it. Um, so when we apply these in an inundated form, then they do quickly um, the population levels will drop over time. 
but it's also possible that for some of these applications that they actually establish themselves as well. So we, we can see in certain instances that we can get um, persistence of the nematodes over long periods of time, but it, yeah. it's a case by case situation. And uh, there are studies showing that some of them obviously drop off quite quickly population levels, others can establish themselves. So it, it varies. So it's uh, not a straightforward answer. Okay. Thanks, Keith. Um, Hong Mei, one question for you around, um, you were you were showed us some work at the end around the fall armyworm and nematodes research. When that research was undertaken, at what insta, at what age of the fall armyworm are you having to apply the nematodes? What, what is the best uh, So time? like uh, two or uh, second star or third star. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, thank you. And um, I guess uh, I've just got one last question. And I it was the in both examples in North Korea and in Rwanda, we talked about a lot of uh, uh, soil uh, pest pop high soil pest populations. And, and how important is it just to have, I guess, very healthy soil management to start off with for managing these plant pests? Maybe Keith or Hong Mei, you can answer this question. I mean, it's very important, obviously, because uh, the healthier the soil is, then the, probably the less pest problems we get as we go forward. It's, um, yeah, um, yeah, soil health is a, it's a key component. So we have the right microflora in there, the, the conservation of these natural enemies, et cetera, would keep the populations down. Yep. So it's very important that we have the, the right environment in the first instance. So the use of crop rotations can be critical. If we have similar crops being produced in cycle, then we're just going to exacerbate the problem, increase the uh, population of the pests. So yep. you need to have proper cultural controls, proper use of um, as inputs, etc. Okay, thanks, Keith. Hong Mei, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, we'll definitely be sharing all those materials, and I'd just like to really give you a special thanks for coming along and sharing your expertise. So thanks, Hong Mei. I, and you may have some Q&As, questions in there. If you could answer those um, in writing, that would be great. And I'd really like to introduce our next speaker because we really, am, I, I want to give uh, this person lots of time because it's an excellent presentation um, that has been prepared for our last uh uh, presentation of the day, uh, Dr. Lu or Professor Lu, would you like to share your screen and um, start your presentation? Okay. Okay. Good afternoon Perfect. and good morning. So thanks to Alison also all the audience. My name is uh, Liu Jianhua. I work for the Chongping Jilixing Bioengineering Company. Uh, it's my pleasure to share with uh, all the audience the functions and the applications of broad spectrum biopesticides, metallism and isoplate CQM A421 for controlling for army war. In my presentation, uh, we have uh, three parts. Part one, functions of metallism and isoplase CQMA421. Part two, application of CQMA421 to control FAW of corn. Part three, mass production of CQMA421 in our company. This uh, part one, function of metallism and isoplay CQMA421. Uh, our strategy for isolating a broad spectrum, uh, so to screen for a broad spectrum strain, with no adverse effect on natural enemies of rice paste. So a broad spectrum strain, metallism and isoplase CQMA41 was selected from over 1,000 isolates. 
could infect uh, most species of rice insect pests with no adverse effect on dry dragonflies, uh, parasitic wasps, spiders, and other natural enemies. These uh, dragonflies, some um, wasps, this is uh, the main pest. Um, the host range of CQMA41, it can infect uh, seven orders of insect pest. Also have uh, infestivity activity to nematodes. The seven orders uh, include Otoptera, Diptera, Dysemoptera, Hymenoptera, Idoptera, Coleoptera, Hemiptera. So many species can infest it. These are some uh, uh, examples. The insect paste infested by the CQMA41 in all the seven orders of insect paste. CQMA41 can infest uh, uh, various forms of insect pests on the eggs, larvae, pupil, adult. So it could control insect pest at a various growth stage. Uh, I think uh, mostly uh, effectively for the uh, larvae and uh, the eggs. We have a four formulation of the CQMA421. All the four formulations uh, have been registered uh, in China as the biopesticides. So we have four kind of products. One is the uh, oil dispersion, the granular, also the vegetable uh, powder, also the Cockroach, uh, cockroach bait. Part two applications of uh, CKMA421 to control uh, FAW of core. Uh, in the indoor infested uh, taste, yeah, the CKMA421 have uh, the activity against the different instances of level of FAW. So uh, it had uh, infesting activities against the first or second instar of young larvae of FAW with a mortality of 30% to 40%. CQMA41 can infest the pupil of FAW to decrease its reproductive ability. So the metabolism could effectively infect the pupil of four army worm, causing melanization deaths and the reduction of eclosion rate. The impact of CKMA421 infestation on the egg hatching and the larvae survival of FAW, um, it reduces the hatchability of eggs and make the newly hatched larvae to die soon. The mixed uh, CKMA41 with uh, BT 
uh, enhanced the investing activity on four amyvore. So the mixed application of CQM421 and the BT had the obvious uh, synergistic effect, which can effectively control the secondary star larvae of FAW. So this uh, really high uh, mobility with the combination of application, both uh, CQMA41 plus uh, BT. We use uh, CQMA41 to plus the chemical uh, pesticides to control uh, four army worm on corn in uh, Puai, Yunnan, 2019. So we use the dosage, 80 milliliter of CQMA421 OD uh, plus uh, eight milliliter of chlorine trainer approval for uh, every 667 square meters by spraying. The um, result, the FAW was effectively controlled without the further infestation. After the early application on the, uh, of the combination of CQMA421 plus uh, chlorine trainer blower on 2nd July. This is uh, the before trial. This is the after, uh, after the application of the CQMA421 plus the chemicals. Uh, we also have uh, the trial in um, Qianjiang, Chongqing, also used the uh, CQMA41 plus uh, chemical pesticides to control uh, foil army war. Uh, before trial, 95% corn plants infested. It's very severe, the pest density, four or five larvae per plant. The larvae age is at the first to third instance. So uh, after the 40 days after application, the control um, efficacy of the combined application of CQMA41 plus chemical insecticides is about 95% on the third day after application. So we use the four kind of chemicals. Some uh, is a full dust of the chemical. This is a half dust of the chemicals. Also, uh, we use the CQMA41 plus a half of chemicals. So you can find uh, for the half chemicals is very low uh, efficacy. Uh, with the CQMA41 plus a half of chemicals can get the high uh, level of the efficacy to control the uh, FAW level. So for other chemicals have the similar uh, results. Ema mectin, also the spinatolin, also the and lapia. So combine the application of CKMA421 plus a half dozen chemicals had a similar control efficacy to FAW larvae compared with the that of full dust of pest insecticide chemicals. It had an obvious scene uh, and uh, persistent effect to control uh, for army wounds. We use the CQMA plus the chemicals. We use the drawing spraying to 
uh, control the uh, FAW larvae. Also, for the uh, to control to infest the egg uh, egg batch of the FAW, so we uh, put in some uh, edge agent. So we have uh, four treatment. The first uh, treatment is a uh, CQMA41 plus uh, imamectin by manual by manual spray. Treat two uh, CQMA41 plus uh, imamectin plus uh, adjuvant by manual spray. Treat three CQMA41 plus uh, imamectin plus uh, adjuvant, but uh, by drawing spray, this is the check, no spray. So the result uh, showed that the adjuvant could uh, penetrate the carbon hair of uh, eggs, then enhance the, the infectivity of DQMA421 using same dosage of the combination of CQMA41 plus uh, imamectin Benny Zolt added with uh, adjuvant. The drawing spraying had uh, the similar control efficacy on FAW larvae to manure spray. So it uh, indicated that the adjuvant can effectively improve the control effects of drawing spray. We uh, try have the trial in uh, Nanchang, Yunnan in 2020. We have uh, the protocol use the CQMA41 uh, plus uh, imamectin plus uh, adjuvant by the drawing spraying also have very good results. The results showed it's effective to control the first uh, insta larvae of a four army worm by adding adjuvant in drawing spraying. After the, the three day after application, the efficacy can be more than 90%. Part three is the mass production of CQMA421 in our company. Our company uh, established the uh, largest uh, the fermentation system in the world for mass production of fungi spores. So we have a success uh, in large solid uh, ferment. Also, auto mission for solid fermentation, easy to optimize fermentation, have a huge production capacity. Having the largest capacity in production of fungal pesticides in the world, our company wish uh, to have a cooperation from home and abroad, both in OEM and the application of fungal spore and its uh, formulation. So, uh, some uh, uh, government also some uh, uh, enterprise have interest to have the cooperation with our company. Uh, they can contact uh, Mr. Yun Shen Long, our uh, general manager. So this is uh, his uh, email address. Also, uh, can read the, by this uh, code, 
code can uh, contact uh, our company for the for the cooperation for the for the information. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your time. Also, I'd like to uh, give more explanation if you have any uh, question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh, another wonderful presentation. Really interesting. I'm struck by the size of your facilities. They're, it's really huge. So I'm not surprised that it's the largest uh, solid fermentation system in the world for the mass production of fungal spores. It is very big, very impressive, uh, and very interesting your results as well in your field trials. Um, it's quite, I think, um, really exciting to see the um, increased performance that you can get from those synergistic uh, effects when you're using um, this CQMA421 with other solutions. Um, so that, that's really exciting to see. So I have a question here and I've got some other questions, but this question here is from Beatrice and she is asking, could you please give a little more detail on how you combine CQMA421 with BT? Uh, I think uh, uh, because of the CQMA421 is a fungal uh, pesticide, so it's uh, act uh, very, uh, a little slow. So also we wanted to uh, combine the, the CQMA41 with the BT, uh, maybe to have the fast killing, also the uh, expand its uh, effect. So yeah. uh, both together uh, showed the uh, better uh, effect. And do you just mix this is a basic question, but do you just mix the two together at the very start? Uh, yes, ju just uh, uh, during the application, we mix the together to yep. spray on the plant. Yes. Great. Um, here's a question from Wilma. How many farmers or percentage of farmer, no, how many, how much or many farmers are using your product? In, in China amongst maize growers or corn growers? Uh, I think uh, it's a very big uh, number, very big uh, area because uh, uh, our team uh, have the uh, research uh, for more than uh, almost 20 years. So for the company is uh, five years. So we uh, have a wide uh, trial, wide uh, uh, experiment uh, all over China. So for many, many kinds of uh, crops, uh, rice, uh, corn, uh, and uh, uh, fruit trees, uh, vegetables, uh, and so on. So uh, it's uh, uh, very important new uh, biopesticides in China. So our government to pay a very, very high protection for uh, this new product to extend uh, for the extension. So uh, a lot of province, a lot of uh, area to use it. Yep, excellent. And so is it costly? I mean, in this case, I think maybe there's subsidies for its use in China potentially, but would it be costly for farmers to buy? Is it expensive? Uh, <laughs> it's a good uh, question. Yes, <laughs> it's a, a little cost uh, uh, higher than the chemical pesticides, but uh, for some uh, uh, base, for some uh, uh, some base, they uh, they are aim to produce the organic uh, safe uh, product, yep. so they cannot find. Uh, uh, effective uh, bio uh, yep. pesticides. So for the common uh, farmer, uh, it uh, 
to new the to use the pure bio pesticides is a little costly, but uh, so we uh, recommend to use the uh, bio pesticide with uh, uh, reduce the dose of the chemical pesticides. Yeah. So it's not so costly. Uh, also have a very fast effect, a very good results. Also to stop the uh, resistance, the pest resistance to the chemicals. For some chemicals, if we use for a long time, the resistance is very high. So the, uh, it's not better for the farmer to control it. Yeah, excellent. That, that was a question from somebody in the chat whether it had use for resistance. Um, so that question has been answered. Um, and there was one question here. Um, there's a question here, can we mix synthetic pesticides with CQMA421? And the answer is yes, because that was given as an example. A question here though from Wilma, have you tested using just CMQ plus the adjuvant uh, against fall armyworm? Uh, for the adjuvant, uh, the only aim is uh, to um, to increase the infestivity uh, for the egg for yes. the egg of the FAW because uh, for the FAW egg uh, covered with the the hair, so we use the adjuvant the. Uh, CQMA, uh, the fungi can easy to uh, infest it on the fact the egg to increase the effectivity. Excellent. Okay, um, Dr. Lu, I just like to say thank you so much. I thought there was uh, some really um, fascinating information that you shared with us today. I'm going to give a brief summary now of everyone's. I'm going to spend a bit of time on yours, but before I do that, because I know we're two one minute over time, everyone, but I'm going to be very brief in my summary. But I'd like to thank you very much and your team uh, for uh, sharing with us uh, those results. Really interesting um, and lots of key information that I'm going to come back to at the end. So. So thank you and thank you to everyone. I'm going to be very brief for a quick conclusion, but just another fantastic session. You've, there's lots of positive feedback um, right throughout, lots of um, hearts there and clapping. Um, Keith really looked at the increasing problems of soil pests and how to manage this um, through the development of a low cost, locally adapted, sustainable production by control system using EPNs in North Korea and really um, emphasized uh, the uh, how important it is to increase capability across stakeholders and the production system, including hands-on training. And that was sometimes a complex task needing multiple activities uh, for effective tech transfer. And that partnership was really critical. Um, Hong Mei um, really uh, emphasized those points again and came in giving an example in Rwanda, um, which also suffers from severe soil pest problems and emphasized that need to know where the problem is, identify local EPNs and isolate and screen them for the most effective uh, use in the field trials. Um, Hong Mei also talked about mass production facilities, how they can be established, and the importance again of training and communication to raise awareness and develop skills across the different stakeholders um, that are applying these techniques. Dr. Lee, oh actually, and I'll just say Hong Mei, I really enjoyed seeing how you um, drew in the younger generation and had the kids, the children there are uh, actually seeing how this new technology works. I think that's so important. So it's really nice to see. Dr. Lee, you gave us another great example of the design and development of a biopesticide that can control fall armyworm, but it doesn't impact beneficials or natural enemies of fall armyworm. And it showed um, this CQMA421, um, how it infests uh, various forms of insect pests, but most effective at those early stages, at the larval stages and the first instars but really showed the strong synergistic, synergistic effects of that with other solutions like BT or even chemical pesticides. And this really resulted in more effective solutions, but importantly, how it can really reduce the use of pest, chemical pesticides by up to 50% in your example. So I think that's a really something really interesting to explore further across Southeast Asia, because that's um, a huge benefit to everyone to try and reduce um, the overuse of chemical pesticides in our um, in our uh, crop 
um, production systems. And really, I thought interesting the use of drones, also very efficient, as well as that need of that adjuvant to help the penetrate the eggs more efficiently, leading to really greater mortality of fall armyworm, which is what we all want. So I just thought it was fantastic. Um, really nice to see all those examples in action, working with stakeholders uh, and really driving results in the field for more um, integrated pest management techniques. So thank you to all three speakers and all the people that helped you put those presentations because I know you had teams behind you. Uh, we really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank um, uh, Fung as well, uh, head of the Southeast Asia Cabbie for helping to facilitate the session who couldn't be here today, but we really appreciate his support. And thank you lastly to all the um, participants. It's so wonderful to see you. I know we got quite a bit over 100 people today and that just shows how much interest there is in this, but we really enjoy uh, having you um, and attending these uh, presentations and, and having your feedback. So thank you. Keep safe, everyone, and uh, enjoy thank the rest you of your much. day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see you next time. <laughs> yeah, in the field, in the field. You, you field, okay. <laughs> I think everyone's joining us as well. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Bye. Bye.